is our final night in the house. I'm all packed. My car. Oh my goodness. The cats are in. My car's an absolute mess. So let's go. Hi, babies. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the start of my Peak District vlogs. So, as you can see, I'm actually still in the house because today's Friday, the 1st of March. Happy 1st of March, by the way. Happy new month. Isn't it so weird that I'm moving out on like the beginning of a new month? I don't know why I like that, but I kind of like that. Like, I'm moving out at the beginning of the new month. Um, but yeah, anyway, as you can see, still in the house, completely empty. Today is the final morning slash, I mean, I don't know what time I'm going to be here till actually. Um, but yeah, my last few hours in this house, which is so strange, I'm not going to lie. I barely slept last night. I felt really anxious and just so unsettled and I think it's because obviously we're handing the keys over like it's a big thing leaving this place especially for Mitchell he's been here nine years um I'll have been here two years in May and I feel like as well um obviously we're not getting the keys to our new house straight away so it's now kind of three weeks in limbo I mean it's going to be lovely going to the Peak District don't get me wrong but I have the cats to worry about and honestly anyone that has animals will just know like I don't know, I just feel a little bit anxious for them because I feel like they know that something is happening. They've been so, what is the word? How do I describe it? Like on edge for the last two, three days, especially Buddy bless him. Um, I need to try and sort out the kitchen. I've had to take all of the bottom of the units off to get him out because we took the washing machine out and he managed to get like underneath the cupboard and oh my goodness. We then tried to like put something there so we couldn't find him in there this morning. It's a whole drama. But yeah, bless Buddy, like he is so petrified. Boo, like she's a little bit more chill. She'll go with the flow. Buddy, no. So yeah, the fact I've now got to like move them over to an Airbnb for two weeks then we don't know where we're going for the final week so I couldn't actually book the Airbnb for three weeks so I need to try and find somewhere else for another week so it's just going to be a lot for them it's been a lot for them to move house anyway but the fact they're going to be in two different places before we move and settle yeah they're going to be a little bit destructive but I feel like I'd have rather done this and you know I can stay with them they know they're with me than put them in the category I know a lot of you will probably be like why don't you just put them in the category but yeah I just didn't feel right about doing that um so anyway I have just been running around this morning. I went and got a little coffee fix. I also nipped into m and so I thought I'd leave something for the new homeowner. Do just like a little something? I've got her a card, some chocolates, um, some, well, I was gonna get her flowers, but then I was like, she's not probably gonna have a vase to hand, so I've got her a little plant. Oh wait, I've got no memory. Let me delete something. <laughs> so yeah, I will show you what I've got her. I just thought it'd be nice just to leave her a little something. Obviously, you know, whenever anyone makes a new start in life, I feel like it's always, just jumping into the unknown for obviously anyone and it's always scary at the beginning i feel like a lot of people don't speak about this with moving they speak about all the highs of moving into a new house but actually i'm someone that i just love my home and i'm a very settled person and when i'm kind of destructed from my like safe space and my home probably like anyone it, it's a big thing and i remember moving into the barn and it was supposed to be like such a happy time i'd got the keys rented my first little place and i honestly was so miserable for the first two or three weeks that for me as well obviously was the first time i ever moved out of home so it was just such an adjustment and yeah i just feel like people don't always talk about the kind of sad part of moving too yes there is a lot to look forward to but it's also it can be you know unsettling you know, you can feel a bit anxious about it. I feel like it always takes a while to make a house a home and make that place your home. Like when you first just walk into this new space, it's not your home and you almost feel like you don't belong there. Like, I don't know if this makes sense, but yeah, it definitely took me a while to settle when I first got the keys to my barn conversion. And even when I moved into Mitchell's, like it's just, yeah, it takes a while, so. Before I do that, I'll show you that. I also just nipped in to TK Maxx. Let me just put you here. We're gonna do a little haul because I just, like I say, I feel like this morning I'm very like a lost part. I don't know what to do because I'm waiting to get into my Airbnb, which I can't get into free. I have messaged him and currently asked if he can maybe let me in like an hour early um, because that's all I'm really waiting on. As soon as I know when I can go to my Airbnb, I can hand the keys over 
I mean, obviously, you have to wait for the legalities as well. I just feel like a bit of a lost part. I feel like I'm just in limbo. I feel like I'm just waiting to pack up. Do my final turn of the key in this house. Um, so I thought I'd go and grab myself a coffee this morning to keep myself that fuel. And then I also took a little trip to TK Maxx because, well, <laughs> this is my current makeup bag and we're having a job getting everything in. Like, I can't get my big Bobby Brown in. I just selected all the makeup that I thought I'd be using over the next couple of weeks. So I had to really limit myself, which has been hard. So, do you know what? I thought I'd treat myself to a new makeup bag. Why not? Happy moving day. How nice is this? I was in between the beige and pink. And I was like, don't be a beige girl all the time. Like, get something colourful. Um, it's like a muted pink. I really like it. It was £15. It's DKNY. And, um, yeah, I just think as well, you know, because it's one of those where it's just got a flat space. It would be so easy to actually see my makeup and there should be a lot more space. So I treated myself to that. I also treated myself to one of these heatless curling headbands. It was five, four, well, five pound, four ninety nine. Um, I got a black one, so it looks less crazy. I have tried these before, but yeah, I need to have a go again because last time I did it, my hair went boom. But every time Georgia does it, honestly, it looks insane. So she's made me get a new one because it just i feel like it makes your life so much easier especially if you've got like a nine to five or you've got to be up early in the morning whack this in your hair's done in the morning so we're going to try and adapt ourselves to that also i picked up this from tk maps it's molly may's um ultra hydrating smooth me i think it's a body butter but i used the fake tan of this so i thought oh do you know what i'm gonna get that it was 4.99 so it's normally 13 pound retail so yeah I was very surprised to see that in there. Is that a sign of it not selling? I don't know, but yeah, I thought I'd grab that. Then I picked up a Real Techniques. By the way, why is everything so cheap in TK Maxx? Is it because it doesn't sell and then it goes in there? Because obviously there's so many things that you do see in there, which are obviously full price in their actual retail stores. So let me know about that, because I genuinely don't know. Um, but yeah, I then saw a Real Techniques sponge and I actually need a new one, because mine in here, guys, Filthy. Look at the state of that. That's so embarrassing. And this was only two ninety nine with the case. And these are normally like eight pounds. So yeah, treat myself to one of those. New brow pencil. I'd run out of that. Oh, just got myself a toothbrush and toothpaste because mine's all packed. Um. Oh, and then I went B and M. Did actually get anything exciting in B and M? I just got cat food and then. Yorkshire tea. Obviously, I need my supply of Yorkshire tea. I have actually already got some left over, but just thought I'd get another box. Um, I also got these coffees. You guys know I don't like strong coffee. Um, and my grandma always has these around her house. So I genuinely love them so much. They're so milky and really smooth. They're just these. They're only a pound. So yeah, you don't need milk or anything with them. I mean, I do normally put a splash of milk in. But I thought I'd grab those. And then I also got the cat, this blanket, to put in their little bed. Because... They don't actually have their own blanket. It would probably been better if I'd put their own blanket in with their scent on, but they don't have one because they normally sit on my bed. So, yeah, we're going to put this in. So, at least it's nice and comfy in there because their little carrier that I've got, it's this, oh, my camera keeps flipping the screen. So, the, it's this carrier. It's honestly so big. It's really ideal for my two cats. Um, so, that at least they can stay together in one carrier because I think they'll prefer that. But, yeah, I'm going to put this little bed in it. Also, I just thought I'd quickly show you what I got, the person that's moving in here. So I just thought I'd get her a plant because I was going to get flowers, but then I thought, actually, she's probably not going to have a vase at hand. It's not going to be the first thing she thinks of to unpack. So yeah, I got her this. It was only £6 with the plant pot, which I thought was really nice. And they've not blossomed yet. So that's cute. And I also know that roses aren't toxic to cats. That's always something you have to think about. And she's got two cats too. Also just picked up a hand wash because there's no hand wash in the house currently. And obviously, she's going to be moving in straight away. She needs to go toilet and stuff. <laughs> thought that would be convenient um also just got her some little chocolate truffles i mean i don't know if she likes them but you know what i mean i just thought it's the thought isn't it and then i'm gonna write her this card so yeah i just thought i'd leave that there because i think that'll be really nice for her to come in and just a little something guys it's been emotional i'm all packed my car oh my goodness the cats are in my car's an absolute mess it's a little story hi babies are we okay Oh, it's okay. I need to turn you the other way around. All right, let's go. Okay, guys, and just like that, it is an end of a chapter. I have just handed over the key and left 
our house it feels so so strange as you can see the car is ram packed to be honest with you i'm thinking like did i even need all the stuff but i don't know three weeks is a long time i like my luxuries i like my clothes and beauty products so anyway it is what it is i've obviously got all the cat stuff in there as well which is chaos by the way they're doing all right oh look at you babies they seem a little bit more settled now they were so stressed when i first put them in like boo was literally on top of buddy like they were just yeah but you seem a little bit more calmer now don't you um but yeah i'm basically just put up outside of my mum's at the moment because i felt like it was all like a little bit crazy and i just didn't want to get straight on the road and drive to the peak district i needed to come here i had to do something very quickly for work um which was like urgent so I've just sat outside the house, done that. I feel like it's given the cats time to chill out, to be honest with you as well. Um, got a little snack from my mom, bless her. And yeah, I'm ready to hit the road now. So let's see how long it is going to take. I've not even checked the time. One hour, 11. So what? what's the time it's saying I'm going to get there? Oh, so I feel like that'd be about right. So I'll probably get there at like quarter past two with no stops um check-ins at three so i'm hoping fingers crossed i can get the keys just like 45 minutes early they normally leave them in a little box to you i think that's how it works so anyway let's get on the road because i feel like you two just need to get there now okay guys i am finally here i'm so sorry i've not checked in with you i can't even remember the last time i've checked in with you but it has been a stressful last few hours to say the least so i arrived here just before three which was fabulous but the dramas i had on my way i feel like i need to get a cup of tea and actually sit down and update you once i've had something to eat because so far today all i've had is an apple oh my god that's all i've had and it's six o'clock like no wonder i feel a little bit lightheaded and weak so i've just been to the co-op i've just got myself some food i'm gonna make a nice stir fry tonight and yeah once I've done dinner, we will catch up, but oh my goodness, you're not even going to believe what happened, what has happened, just how my day has gone. It's honestly been chaos. Um, so yeah, let me actually, let us just unbox, unbox, um, let me show you my food chart because like I said, I thought I'd quickly walk down to co-op um, with how steep and just like small and narrow the roads are here there was no way i was taking my car back out and driving i was like absolutely not absolutely not not doing it um so yeah i ended up walking because it said only a seven minute walk but oh my god that walk on an empty stomach and bearing in mind my asthma is not being that great either at the moment so hard it's like basically vertical drop hills um so like going down obviously wasn't too bad but then going back up with my shopping oh my goodness i feel exhausted so anyway let me just show you what i got where can i put you i'm gonna put you there um i just got a few bits like i didn't really know what to get in like i'm not in a big shop um but i just picked up obviously is the lighting a bit rubbish there let me move you back over here actually i think that would be okay won't it for now okay so quick food shop i got a loaf loaf of bread so i've got that in because i think i already mentioned that mitchell's brother and our sister-in-law's coming up at the weekend so i wanted like some nice lunch in. i mean we'll probably go out but you know i'll eat this anyway so i've got some halloumi avocado honey and chili flakes i'm gonna do like honeyed halloumi avocado chili flakes on toast so i've got that in and then we put for dinner just a stir fry i just thought let's keep it simple i don't want to be doing any fancy cooking tonight because i just need to think quite quick so i just got the um co-op like stir fry mix i also got oh some butter because we've not got any of that in the fridge i picked up this sauce i've never actually had it so i really hope it's nice it's just a satay stir fry sauce and then I picked up some chicken fries because I much prefer chicken fries than chicken breast um, with my stir fry. Some noodles, honey, chili. Oh, I got this sweet chili because I actually got some corn crackers. So that's going to be a little starter. Um, so I can nibble on that now whilst I do dinner. My avocados, they need to stay out because they are not right. And then obviously I need a sweet treat after the day I've had. So I got some mini eggs. Well, I got one mini eggs and two flake um, do you like the Cadbury's chocolate puddings? Because these were three for two pound, which isn't too bad. Also got some chocolate, so we've got that in the cupboard. And oh my goodness, cannot forget the milk chocolate digestives. Because I know Heather likes milk chocolate digestive. So yeah, that is my food haul, oh, guys. I also got 
a big like diet coke because i just thought oh i've got like no soft drinks in for any one of them water i don't know everyone likes a diet coke i mean i've been trying not to drink them lately just because they're quite acidy and i don't know if they're like giving me what is it like heartburn acid yeah i've been trying not to drink them um but just because i've never had acid i can't work out if that's what i've got anyway i'm gonna dig in i'm so hungry that food shop actually cost me so much money because i feel like one cup is expensive and two do you know when you literally have nothing in the cupboards but you want to do something like a little bit well i guess it's not really that fancy but like the avocado halloumi honey on toast i need to basically buy like a whole honey chili flakes um so right anyway let's get dinner on how nice is this as well guys i don't think i've even shown you this well i don't think i've shown you anything yet i don't even think i've shown you the little cottage so i'll give you a little tour um but the people left these triple chocolate cookies and a chardonnay one two glasses out i just think that's the cutest thing ever like how adorable is that this cottage by the way is so cute i literally feel like i'm cameron diaz on the holiday i'm not even joking you like look at the garden it's just adorable. Anyway, I need to get something to eat before I faint because I, yeah, I need some food in me. A full one is served. Oh my goodness. I tried to half it, but there's so much. I feel like I need to move this uh, table up. Ooh. Oh my goodness. How adorable is this, guys? I thought I'd just sit at the table because I don't want to like mess someone else's house up. Um, but yeah, made a satay chicken stir fry. I'm not going to be able to eat all of that, but I'll attempt it. <laughs> and then I've got some prawn crackers and a little sweet chili dip anyway i'm gonna talk into this now because as i've already said a hundred times i am so hungry good morning everyone it's been it's been a while it's been a while since i picked up the vlog i actually haven't really vlogged in the peak district yet i feel like the last footage you will see in this vlog is me making dinner i said i was going to fill you in on all the drama of getting here and i actually never have and that is because i have been so poorly like you couldn't even write how poorly and how just i think it's like anxiety as well that the anxiety and stress i've had over the past i'm gonna say like 48 hours it's now sunday um so yeah you know in my mind i was like oh i'm gonna have like a really nice just like weekend in the peak district vlog before this one would come out because i actually had my sister-in-law mitchell's brother and mitchell up yesterday it was very short and sweet they literally arrived well they arrived quite early to be fair but then they literally left at like 7 45 today sunday um but yeah i'm gonna fill you in on all of that in a minute like we need a full catch-up but i've managed to get out this morning i'm feeling a little bit better i'm not 100 percent, but i do think it might be a combination of like asthma stress anxiety so we're gonna just tell my mind that not overthink not google things not let my health anxiety you know go into overdrive and um be positive let me show you my food shop i've managed to get out by the way i haven't eaten in two days so the last footage you would have saw was me making dinner i then went to sit down and eat that dinner and i don't know if anyone's ever had this but literally like my mouth was watering like do you know, like trying to put it in my mouth and like i just felt so strange and i was like i can't eat it like i just i genuinely can't eat it so look at it i bought them prawn crackers and sweet chili like the sweet chili dip so i managed to have like a few like a few of those but that was all i had that day along with some apple then it come to yesterday and we went to a pub in a little village i'm staying in to have a breakfast now i'm not really a breakfast girl anyway especially an english breakfast like i just i don't like english breakfast like it's not for me i only like like the hash brown and sausage and beans but anyway mitchell ordered me one i was like look you need to try and eat something so just eat it i i, I couldn't oh is that my phone um and i genuinely and genuinely i just couldn't eat it like again i just felt so nauseous so sick I just, I was really trying to force myself to eat it and I just couldn't. I think I had like half hash brown, half a sausage. And that's not like me. Like I'm a girl with a big appetite. Like I love my food. And then yeah, basically just to summarise, like the whole day I pretty much didn't eat anything. I had some apple, managed to get some apple down there. And then, oh, we went um, for an Indian yesterday evening and I had one papadam and half a nut bread. Um, because again, I don't know, like I don't know what's wrong with me. I just, I felt so nauseous and just sicky so anyway like i had a good cry this morning on the phone to my mom like with all this stress and everything so anyway she was like get yourself to co-op get some like herbal tea get um some like you know like wet foods like a soup um yogurt like things i can probably stomach i feel like it's like food food that i just i feel sick at the thought of it so let me show you my little food haul so i picked up these is it 
chamomile tea i've heard it's supposed to be like really good for like stress anxiety just a whole lot of lot of properties so gonna have one of these these have caffeine in by the way i'm hoping they don't because i basically picked up these as well because i can't just keep drinking tea with loads of caffeine um right then i got for breakfast it's about half 11 now but i've not had anything to eat yet today um so i've got these yogurts because i know they're my favorite these yikos extra is that how you say it? yikos extra creamy greek style yogurts i love those um i've also got my favorite apples because i absolutely love pink lady apples so i'm hoping maybe for breakfast i can have that and an apple then i've got some celery and hummus for a snack because again like I'm hoping, just because it's quite like, watery, like that's what I'm finding I want, like something watery, like an apple, and like maybe, like I say, I can probably do a yogurt. Then for lunch, I have some roast chicken soup and some tiger bread. And then for dinner, I was thinking, oh my goodness, like what am I going to even eat for dinner? Because I just, again, don't really fancy anything. Mum suggested a poke bowl because I like a poke bowl. It's kind of picky. It's light. So they had my favourite rice in co-op, the Caribbean rice. So I'm going to do half a packet of that. Some salmon. Obviously, like, come into a place like this, you don't have all your seasonings. So I did pick up some honey yesterday, because I actually got breakfast in for Mitchell and everyone yesterday, but they didn't stay. In all fairness, they had the kids to get back to, so I feel like they just wanted to get off early, and do you know what I mean? So I get it. But yeah, I got some avocados and honey and halloumi in anyway, so I'm going to use my honey, use my light soy sauce, I think some salt and pepper, and just put that on the salmon. And then to go in my poke bowl, I've got some sweet chilli, the avocado, some cucumber... And that's, yeah, that's it for veg. I also just thought I'd get some like banana and custard. Again, I just feel like I can probably stomach that. And then I also got some hot chocolate. Um, as another like hot drink. So I'm really like wanting a hot drink for my throat. So anyway, that's my little food haul. I'm now going to try and get myself a yogurt and some apple. And then we can catch up fully. And I can fill you in on all the drama, guys. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I feel like the last time I picked up this vlog was on Sunday and I do feel like this vlog just isn't going to plan at the moment. It's a little bit all over the place but like I say we need to catch up. We need a big catch up this morning and I am definitely going to do it um, but I'm actually heading out and obviously you'll understand why when I fill you in when I'm in my car. I feel like I haven't got time to sit and tell you now because I need to get out which again You'll understand when I tell you. But before we do go out, and whilst there is quiet, I thought, first of all, I'd very quickly give you a little cottage tour in the Peak District because I feel like I've started this vlog and that's how I would normally start like a little staycation, do you know what I mean? Like going away somewhere, I'd, like show you around and give you a tour of the place I'm staying. But like I say, because it has been so chaotic and so much has happened, I just haven't. So obviously it's been a little bit lived in now. So I don't know, that's why I normally like to show you straight away. Do you know like when all my stuff's not around but because of circumstances i just couldn't do that so yeah let me show you okay so excuse the fact it is a bit of a dark gloomy day outside i feel like whenever that's the case like somewhere always looks a little bit more gloomy doesn't it it was so nice as well yesterday but when you come through the front door this is what you see so they actually have like a little mud tray do you know, like when your trainers are mucky you can just put them on there i don't know if that's what it's called but now we're calling that so yeah my trainers are there i've actually got a pair outside that need desperately cleaning um but yeah you come in and this is what it looks like super cozy and just very like cottagey style i just love it so much um got a little coke coat hanger thing here, two sofas, a little coffee table, there's also a fire that um, you can switch on and have that on which is really nice. We also have a TV and Mitchell actually brought my skybox up when he came at the weekend so I'm so grateful for that because I've already mentioned this, this isn't an ad by the way, I do work with Sky but these skyboxes are so good because you can literally go anywhere and take it um, and obviously if you've got your Sky subscription you'll have all your channels on it um, so yeah I've literally plugged it in and now I have my like full Sky package which is so so good for the evenings when I'm on my own and just want to watch a little bit of TV um, I've put that there just because I mean there is um like weighted beads in that vase but i don't know i just didn't like the fact that that was just sitting there and like during the cats have zoomies and stuff so i put my suitcase there um and then yeah this is everything there's loads of books here and also loads of like board games and puzzles which i feel like is really really cute and cozy so yeah that is the little living room which is so so sweet and then if we come through to this room we have the kitchen let me just turn yeah, let me turn all the lights on so it looks as bright as it possibly can. How nice is the kitchen? It's very obviously like modern and updated. 
beautiful kitchen. It's actually a very similar kitchen to what mine and Mitchell's is going to be, other than we are having quartz worktops. Um, so yeah, I really, really love the kitchen. It's so like well stocked as well for an Airbnb. There's literally like baking tins in there and everything. So yeah, really, really pleased with that. There's also a washing machine, which is another plus because I'm here for two weeks, so I can do my washing. Um, and oh my goodness, so sweet of them. When I arrived, they actually left some wine and some cookies and two glasses out and I think that's always like a really nice touch when you come to an Airbnb um, and they do also have like coffee and a few bits in the cupboard I mean I've put some of my bits in the cupboard now but there were quite a few little things like left over in the cupboard that you can help yourself to so I think that's really cute um, and then if I show you outside this is the garden so it's a really cute garden area the house next door is actually derelict so if you look out of the back door you can see this, which isn't the garden, like that's next doors, but I'll explain all about this soon. So yeah, this is the downstairs area and there also is a nice little dining table, so that is cute as well. It does fold out, so if you wanted to, you could like pull it out. Obviously got all my cat bits everywhere. Oh, did I show you the cooker as well? Because the cooker is actually around here. So that's where the cooker is. So yeah, it's really nice, obviously, self-catering facilities. Then we walk up these stairs, which, oh my goodness, they are so steep, guys. Like, you have to be so careful. Okay, and then we come upstairs. By the way, I absolutely love these wooden doors. Like, how nice are these? Um, but yeah, this is the smallest room. It's just a double and this is just a little guest bedroom so it's a two bedroomed cottage this is where my mum will be staying when she comes up next week um again it was really nice to have like all fresh lovely towels um out waiting which again always thinks a nice touch and there's mirrors in each bedroom which again is always really nice so that's the guest bedroom then if we turn left let me just put the light on we've got like quite a big hallway space here that leads to the bathroom actually let me show you the bathroom now okay and then if we come to the bathroom i absolutely love the bathroom like these tiles like this bathroom suite i, I just think it's so adorable and i really like this sink too um but yeah real nice bathroom the only thing i would say is like slight criticism is the bath is actually so small i mean it doesn't look small does it but you know when you're in here like the actual bath space if you see it's like from there to there i mean it's fine for me it's like no issue i'm only five foot three but you know if you was any taller than me i feel like you'd find it a bit squished and also the water pressure is so slow like it takes so long to fill the bath up um but again that's not really a problem for me because i'm a bath gal like i love a bath in the evening but yeah i probably would say one kind of criticism would be that you'd probably want a bit better water flow so yeah, it obviously isn't really a problem for me, and I did know that before I booked, because I did see it on the reviews, but uh, yeah, I feel like it wouldn't be for everyone, obviously, staying here, because I know some people are shower people, and you definitely cannot shower with that shower head. Um, but yeah, I love the bath, so it's all good. Let me turn that light off. Right, then, oh, look, we've got Boo. Boo, say hello. The cats, by the way, have definitely settled, like, they seem so much more chill now. Okay, and then if we come to the main bedroom, so this is the king-size bedroom. It's actually really nice, really spacious, and again, it's just very cottagey, like, oldie-woldie, cute vibes like with the flower prints and stuff um and like the wooden bedside tables oh, i just love it obviously i don't feel like i'd ever decorate my home personally like this because obviously it's just not that style of home but obviously it suits the property so much and it is just really yeah it's really wholesome um bed is actually so comfy as well so that's a massive plus that's my electric blanket by the way so <laughs> excuse that so yeah anyway this is the king size bedroom obviously got a nice cupboard space to put all my clothes which i've packed away do you know because i just can't be doing with living out of a suitcase for two weeks i've been living out of a suitcase for the past week whilst um we was waiting to move out which was stressful enough i have just put one of my suitcases under there as well that's the cat's carrier um and then yeah here's all my beauty bits i don't really ever know what you're supposed to do with your beauty bits when you come away i kind of am just living out of my bags with those i did organize them yesterday but then everything just gets slung in again just charging my laptop at the moment so that is why it's there but yeah really nice like little vanity area space as well to get ready which i think is really cute even though like as you can see on a dark day it is quite dark in here and then this is the view outside the property obviously it looks so much nicer when it is a sunny day but it is so beautiful 
um and yeah anyway that is the tour of the little cottage that i'm staying at right i'm finally out of the house guys as you can see i'm in my car and i've actually just come 20 minutes down the road to a sainsbury's that has a coffee shop inside um because i need to be able to work today and you're probably thinking why don't you just go to like a little cute quaint coffee shop in the peak district and i mean i would love to but I had a little look like where I'm staying to be honest with you a lot of them are very like either just takeaway coffees or there's like three or four tables in and you know when you're like remote working you're going to be there for kind of like a lot of the day I don't really want to be taking up a space when you know it's a coffee shop ultimately you know what I mean it's not like, it's not an office space I feel like it can annoy people so yeah I just don't want to be that person that's there on my laptop and whatever um so yeah I just thought I'd find somewhere a little bit more commercialized to come and work today anyway before all of that let me bring you up to speed and actually explain what has been going on over the last few, few days and what I've been up to why I haven't like been vlogging from the offset of like coming here also <laughs> just to add to everything i am fully blocked up i have a cold so i'm really sniffly i can't hear myself even speak so it's not a great start guys but right first of all let's go back to friday when i come up to the peak district i feel like this is the day that honestly just like really traumatized me and stressed me out so as you guys know friday was the day i was hunting over the keys i'm pretty sure i vlogged in the morning i felt very much in limbo obviously because we had to wait until we got the confirmation from solicitors to say that the funds were in the account so we could then hand the keys over so i was just like I don't know, obviously that whole week anyway, me and Mitchell was like laying on the floor on a mattress, you know, with no furniture in a house. So it was all very like unsettled and, you know, a little bit stressful anyway. Even if I didn't particularly feel too stressed in myself, I feel like <coughs> I must have had a lot of stress building up probably unknowingly. Because it is a little bit of a stressful situation when you move in and you just feel here, there and everywhere. So yeah, that was Friday. I then got the obviously email to say, you know, hand the keys over. So I like gathered all my stuff up packed my car which was obviously very chaotic because i i'm literally packing my whole life and three weeks worth of stuff all the cat stuff trying to get the cats in the car which is obviously very stressful like cat owners will understand a lot of cats don't like being in the car they don't like car journeys they don't like going in their carrier they kind of associate it with going to the vets it's stressful for them um, i feel like in hindsight i probably should have ordered them some maybe calming tablets i don't know if they would have worked but yeah maybe i should have done that um but anyway i managed to get everything in the car handed the key over and then i got an email from like something to do with work that i had to get handed over so then that was a little bit of a stress because rather than getting straight on the road i had to go to my mum and just like sit in my car and do what i needed to do and get it sent over then i obviously got on the road literally within five minutes of being on the road boo is literally freaking out but he was actually really calm on the journey he just like was scared but just was very still boo was like in her carrier like just going crazy trying to get out of it trying to bite it obviously then when you're driving that could be quite stressful um and she was like panting like mad it was just, honestly horrific and then about half an hour into my journey all of a sudden i can smell poo and i'm like oh like have they just farted or something <laughs> like i couldn't really work it out but the smell just kept getting worse and worse and worse i was like i'm gonna have to pull over and see what's gone on bless boo oh my goodness it literally breaks my heart she obviously was that scared with everything she had got like extreme diarrhea and it was everywhere in the carrier and to be fair like my mum said this as well maybe i should have got a carry a separate carrier but obviously they like being with each other and i didn't want to then take them away from each other and stress them out with that so i chose just to get like a big carrier and put them both in so anyway at this point both of them were covered in poo like the whole carrier was covered in poo my car stunk like look at i had face wipes in my car because i'm quite organized and have like everything in my car so i've tried to wipe them down as much as i can wiped the carrier down but ultimately we all stunk like i needed to bath them i needed to like properly wash everything um but anyway we carried on with our journey then as i'm approaching in the peak district like where i needed to be a road was closed and it came up on my sat nav to go like down a diverted route so anyway didn't really think anything of it as i've like turned to go on this road i'm like oh my goodness this is like so back road when i say back road it isn't a road it's just like a mud track do you know them roads where it's like just almost like a muddy lane and there's no road markings it's muddy there's like grass in the middle of it it's not an actual road so anyway i was like okay just trust the stat now this is where it says you know i've got to go so i'm going down there and like as i 
I'm going down now. I can see floods. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, can I drive through? Also, only one car can fit down there. It's not like two cars can be down the lane either. Like, it's a very narrow road. So that was stressing me out because I was thinking, oh my goodness, please no one come the opposite way. Typically, there were people coming the opposite ways because little did I know, the reason why everyone was going down this road was because another road was shut. So it was bringing everyone down this like one way road. So anyway, I come across a van and do you know what he was being a bit of an idiot to be honest with you like he was taking so much room upon his side and i was trying to move across as much as i could to let him go but there's only so much i can move right and um yeah he wasn't really giving me anything so anyway i'd moved across and at this point like there's trees literally on my car and everything let him go and anyway go to like move my car guys my wheels were just spinning like i was stuck like i say it was quite muddy as it was down this road but i didn't really realize or anticipate how muddy it was and like how far i'd gone over it was like really really muddy so anyway my car was stuck i couldn't reverse i couldn't go forward i literally sat there like if i didn't laugh i would have cried and i just sat there and was like right i don't even know but so luckily this lady that was in a van behind the other van straight away she knew what was going on she pulled up like wound her window down and was like do you need help are you stuck and she just knew i was about afraid to cry so bless her heart she was like right do not worry do not stress we're gonna sort it she was like what an arse he was like i can't believe he made you pull so much over and you know like he could clearly see you were stuck and didn't even help She's like, don't worry, right, we could sort it. So she put her hazards on, ran back. I feel like she was very much that kind of lady that was in trade herself. She looked like she was in, like, a painter's uniform and she obviously had a van with, like, loads of bits in. Anyway, she managed to get some, I'm going to say, like, paper, like, I don't really know, like, these sheets of paper kind of thing out of her van. And she was like, right, let's put these under each of your tyres and this might help, like, you get some grip so you're not in the mud and you can, like, kind of drive off that. So anyway, tried that, wouldn't work. Kept trying it, kept trying it, kept trying it, wouldn't work. And then in this time, obviously, there's quite a few cars building up. People are just watching, like, there's this guy that's, like, in his van, just watching the whole thing unfold. But then this other lady, bless her heart, oh my goodness, she was just so cute as well. She obviously pulled up as well and got out of her car and was like, guys, do you need some help? Like, do you need an extra pair of hands? So anyway, I had to also, by the way, explain this whole poop situation because... Uh, the lady was like right why don't you get out of the car and i will try and drive your car do you just like to get a different person kind of driving maybe a different strategy and um, yeah you could you two could maybe try and push like that could be another thing so i had to explain to her like you can get in my car but i'm really really sorry it smells of poo and like i was telling her about my morning just how stressful everything was she was like oh my goodness do not worry yeah, like she literally like put her arm around me and was like look if we don't and she said the same thing that i was thinking like if we don't laugh we'll cry you've got this honestly it really did restore faith in humanity like this whole situation so bless this lady she was quite a bit of an older lady and she never drove an automatic so i had to like show her how to drive my car because she got in and was like oh how do you drive your car so i was showing her and then me and this other lady are literally in the back of my car pushing we're at the front pushing i have my like favorite new balance on my new gym shock set i'm like knee deep in mud honestly you just couldn't write it but after about half an hour we finally managed to push my car out and oh my goodness i just gave them both a hug i was like thank you so much i can't even begin to tell you how grateful i'm like how much i appreciate you too like it just really restored like my just faith in like there's nice people around you know because so it was just so freaking kind of them like really was i don't know what i'd have done without them so anyway got out of that situation guys and then i then had my other drama of carrying on down this road so like i say there was another guy waiting he watched the whole thing unfold and the lady that was a little bit older out of the two she was like right love you're gonna have to go and have a word with him because he seems like a bit of an idiot and i feel like unless you get him to reverse all the way back down this road you're going to be stuck again because it gets a little bit worse i was like oh my goodness how how can it get any worse and then the other woman was like there's another flood that you're going to have to go through i was like oh my god i've never gone through floods in my life and especially like in my car like i've got quite a nice car so i wouldn't really like risk going through floods and i was like oh my god like is my car going to be okay like will i get through it they was like you will get through it it'll be fine but you can't go too slow you can't go too fast you need to go just like at a moderate speed don't stop and just like hopefully not get the water in your exhaust and i was like oh my god you just couldn't write this 
so anyway i then went up to this guy and kindly asked if he would you know be able to reverse back because obviously he's just witnessed the stress that i've gone through of which by the way he was like oh i was shouting that i've got leads in my back that i could have pulled you out or something and i just thought honey like you've just sat in your car and watched two women like deal well three women deal with the situation and you've just stood there like mm. anyway he was a bit like yeah i'll move back so thankfully he had to reverse all the way back which by the way like was, was quite a bit of a stretch had to go like reverse through the flood like but anyway the long and the short of it is guys i managed to get through that situation then when i was like getting to the peak district oh my goodness the roads they're so narrow like driving up to the property that i am staying at like that was just a bit of a stress in itself because the roads were so narrow again and i feel like i'd already got trauma from driving down like a single road but i made it um and then oh my goodness it was the whole stress of unloading all my car because where my cottage actually is like i already knew this before i'd booked but i wasn't bothered but i didn't obviously expect to have had all of this stress and drama before i arrived there i feel like this didn't kind of help to the situation um uh, but yeah then like as soon as i got there i've got like shitty cats that needs cleaning i've got all my bags and stuff that i need to like take up this massive like inclined steep hill to my cottage it was an absolute nightmare so the first thing i did was just take all my main bits in like my three suitcases all the cats bits the cat litter you know get that all set up for them and then i thought right i'll come back for the cats after at least if everything's in the cottage i can then come back for the cats and as soon as i get them in we can go straight to the bathroom and i can wash them now then that brings us on to the next traumatic experience because again if anyone has cats like they're not as you know chill as dogs in that sense of being washed i mean some cats i'm sure love being in bath but my two really don't like buddy you could just about manage him but boo especially like i i think the last time i bathed her was when i first had her as a kitten when she was covered in fleas because she just hates it she hates water it stresses her out and so obviously then i'm in the situation where i've got to bath two cats that are extremely stressed and anxious as it is so that was an ordeal in itself like honestly guys by the time i sat down i just i felt so poorly like all week i'd have this kind of like niggle in my arm like a dull pain and then it would be kind of like pins and needles in my arm um yeah it just basically felt like i had a really heavy arm all week and like my asthma as, as you guys know is still not fully under control um but i have actually got an asthma appointment tomorrow so i'm going home for that um but anyway enough of the health crap um uh, because it's just so boring because i feel like there's always something up with me at the moment and then for oh my goodness i've not even eaten today like there's been that much that's gone on i've not even sat and had a meal like i literally had some apple and a coffee all day so i then decided to walk into the local little like town place that i am and get do a little food shop and get myself some nice food down me made this food guys i literally sat there i couldn't eat it like i've never had that like feeling before do you know like when you well i have when i've been sick but i genuinely like got my food and was like i, I can't eat like i had some pork crackers and i could just about manage them but like my actual main meal i couldn't eat so i ended up chucking that away and then honestly like saturday morning i woke up and i felt so poorly like i didn't sleep all night i was anxious all night like i had this like i say this pain in my arm and it was radiated to my chest it almost felt like a burning feeling it was awful and then like i feel like i do probably have a bit of health anxiety anyway and when you've already got that and then when all these like symptoms start to arise you start panicking and i really started to panic um i had a bit of like an upset stomach in the night which i like, had to wake up for and i didn't really understand that because i feel like i've not even eaten anything to make me feel like this uh but yeah anyway then that weekend we had um mitchell coming up and mitchell's brother and um partner oh wait i'm gonna run out of memory so let me quickly delete some of this so then i'm not gonna lie i was feeling so anxious about that because obviously the day i had on friday as much as i was so initially before this whole thing like really excited for them to come up to the peak district on that saturday i was kind of thinking this is just the last thing i need right now like i feel so poorly my cats are so stressed out we've only just got here like having new people around them is going to make them even more stressed out i just felt like like i don't know i just felt so stressed 
And then, like, do you know when you're feeling so ill and then you've got to entertain and speak to people and try and put on a happy face, but yet you don't feel like that? It was just a lot. Long story short, they came up on the Saturday. Like, that whole day, I just felt so poorly. Just, like, kind of got on with it, but equally just felt horrific. Had no appetite. Mitchell literally bought me some breakfast and I just sat there and was like... I can't eat it like I again I just couldn't eat anything and that Saturday evening we went out like I constantly kept having like like the pains in my chest and like this pain in my shoulder just wouldn't go away and then I was like feeling dizzy and uh like we went out for an interview in the evening and again obviously I couldn't eat any food I just felt awful but yeah like I just had I feel like it's potentially it was anxiety and um, stress but I've never really I've suffered I've had anxiety attacks before but yeah, like I don't, it's not something I get all the time. So it's hard to like navigate something that you've never, you never get like on a constant basis. So yeah, anyway, that was that. And then Sunday, Mitchell had to leave early because obviously his brother and sister-in-law had to get back for the kids, which I obviously I completely understood. But obviously because I, I feel like I woke up on the Sunday and like my arm pain had kind of gone a bit. And I was like, oh, that's a little bit weird. I didn't know whether it was maybe because Mitchell was there and I felt like a bit, I don't know, more comforted because I obviously had him there that night. But anyway, he had to leave at like 7.45 and I was an absolute hysterical mess, guys. Like, I was just in bits. I was like, I can't do this. I just feel so stressed about this whole situation. Like, I don't know. I just felt, obviously because I felt ill as well, like that was stressing me out. Like, if I had felt fine and wasn't experiencing all these pains and then not overthinking things and like self-diagnosing myself with things on google like i'd have been okay but i think that's what had got in my head as well um, but yeah anyway that was that i then had a nice phone call with my mum and dad and honestly i feel like they really did did just like help me so much like i had a good old cry to them my dad was like honestly this is just anxiety and stress like you've had such a stressful week moving like your stuff's everywhere like you've got a lot going on and then like what you went from friday is enough to traumatize anyone Laura like it is like he was like your body and mind like your mind is so powerful and you don't realize how much your mind can affect your body and just bring on these like random symptoms and can give you aches and pains and, and cause problems with your health like he's like you just need to chill out he's like you need to just like run a bath go to the shop get yourself something really simple like yogurt soup just like liquidy things that you could eat like get some energy in you because you're not going to obviously feel any better until you do that so yeah like they were just really like rationalizing things to me just making me feel a lot better went for a walk did all of that and then do you know what i sat down at like one two o'clock on sunday evening and was like i actually feel a little bit better but then i started to get a cold then i started to feel like a sore throat and and bunged up nose and i was like oh my goodness i'm getting a cold like what the hell so anyway now it brings us to tuesday and my next drama honestly like as if things couldn't get any worse is that there is building work going on in the cottage next door which is just fantastic so like monday morning i felt so much better after like my sunday de-stress and like my debrief with my mum and dad and you know like my little pep talk and everything i was like right it's gonna be fine you know i've only got like a week well like five days here on my own and then my mum and dad are coming for the weekend we could do some lovely walks my mum stayed with me the week after like everything's going to be fine but yeah then i obviously woke up with a stinking cold which was just fabulous about nine o'clock on monday morning bang 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 i look out the window there's like five or six workmen like and they're going into the cottage next door so funny story when i actually arrived i kind of like peered in just to see like what was going on with the cottage next door just to see if there was any neighbors like not like being nosy but i could just kind of tell it looked a little bit derelict and yeah it was like inside it was literally just stone and brick like there was no floorboards there was no like boarding in the house or you know what i mean like walls it was just stone and brick I was like, oh, like, that's weird, like a derelict little cottage, but at least there's no neighbours. No, there, yeah, there isn't neighbours, but then, like I say, there's all this building work going on, and honestly, yesterday, I planned just such a nice day at home, because I obviously feel so bunged up and congested, I thought I was going to have a nice walk in the morning, which I did, then got back and thought, right, nice day on the sofa, editing, doing a little bit of um, voiceovers, and just emails and work that I've got to do nice kind of like take it easy day make some nice food maybe go for another walk you know what i mean i could really plan my day and then for them people to turn up and honestly because they're shoveling and digging it's just bang 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 and obviously the walls are so thin they've got like the radio on quite loud obviously said stressing out the cats like you just honestly couldn't write it you honestly couldn't write it so guess what my aunt came back 
So how random is that? Like my old pain had kind of gone. I'd say like out of a 10, it had gone to like a two to three. And then yesterday in the afternoon, I'd say it was like a seven again. So yeah, I feel like that's kind of made me think it probably is like the stress and anxiety and whatever. Also, because I, I think my asthma is not properly under control because I keep on and off wheezing. And I know that you can get pains in your arm when your asthma is not under control. So anyway, guys, that is why I'm out today. That is why I'm not in the cottage. Um, there's a whole other spill about like what else happened because basically i ended up long story short trying to make this long story short i ended up messaging the guy who owns airbnb and just politely saying like i'm a little bit disappointed that i booked this place for two weeks and i wasn't made aware of the building work going on next door like i've actually booked this for more of like a little work trip yes okay don't get me wrong i, I do want to definitely go out and explore and do some walks but i needed like a remote work set up and i didn't expect that it, there was going to be building work and loads of noise going on so i'm kind of a bit disappointed about that anyway owner never messaged me back which i found really weird and two seconds later like i have the building guy like who's in control of the operation like knocking on my door having a chat with me and he was really do you know like when you get them condescending characters that are a bit like but we're only going to be banging for 20 to 30 minutes and then we're going to be taking the rubble down you know the hill and then getting rid of it and then it'll be another 20 30 minutes so you know if you are filming or you are editing you can just come and knock on the door and we can just be quiet for a bit i just thought hey like are you are you serious like i shouldn't have to do that i shouldn't have to knock on the door every time i want to do a voiceover or i've got a meeting to take or i need to do something like what if i was here just to relax and then i've got like that banging on the like walls and stuff okay yeah oh my god guys sorry i've just had to quickly switch over to my phone to record the last bit on so the quality might look different you know what i feel like i look different on different cameras like i actually think i look better on this camera than this camera <laughs> um, it's crazy isn't it like how a camera can make you look different or like it can make you look worse or better weird anyway very quickly finishing the story off i'm really sorry guys i feel like i've just been talking at you but hopefully this has kept you entertained because it was so funny i was like voice noting my cousin about it and she was like do you know what i've just been on a walk and like, i felt like i was on a podcast like you need to get on a podcast and tell these stories so anyway yeah the guy came round, and whilst part of him was trying to be like helpful part of it came across as like very condescending and a bit like dicky to be fair um i just don't think you understood my point like i've paid to come to an airbnb to kind of relax retreat but be able to work the last thing i need is building work going on i don't really see how that's fair that i wasn't alerted to that before i came because surely you know if i was alerted to that i wouldn't have come and have booked somewhere else and the thing is like for most people they might have been fine with that like if they are there for the whole week or two weeks just to be out walking every day wouldn't really disrupt them if it's from nine till four and they're out all day but what if you want to stay in all day you can't because it's just so noisy not only that it's now disrupting my cats bless them but they'll just stay under the bed and they'll be fine but yeah anyway just how he was very like but it's, it's not really going to cause you much problem like you know what i mean like if you could just come and tell us i just was like whatever anyway i just said i don't know like i need to think about it i don't know if i'm going to be able to stay here so then I, yeah, just had, was having a little bit of a think about it. He then knocked back on the door and was like, oh, I was just thinking, I do have an office down the road that's got a spare desk at. Like, if you want to come and sit in my office and uh, do some work from there, you're more than welcome to. I just thought, are you, like, serious? I've not paid all this money to come to a cute little cottage to do some work, to then go and sit down the road, half a mile down the road in your office, which I don't really know what it looks like. I can imagine it's not going to be that nice. And, like, I just... I don't know like I get he was trying to help but that just it kind of rattled me a little bit so I just thought it's not the point and do you know like like you're probably thinking I might be a little bit harsh here but do you know when just someone speaking to you like in a real kind of like downward manner like it wasn't I don't know it was like half trying to be nice but half coming across a bit I don't know it was like passive aggressive like I don't really know it just I didn't get good vibes that's what I'm trying to say I felt like he was trying to make out that I was being really awkward and like unreasonable about a situation that I personally don't think I am being unreasonable about I just think it's common courtesy that as an Airbnb owner like the Airbnb owner clearly has something to do with the builder like 100% either it's his property next door that's being renovated or what but like the Airbnb owner hasn't even messed me back himself like he's got that guy to come round which to me tells me that he obviously knew about the work so I just think like 
as the owner of the property, you should have just let people know that. And like I say, some people would have been fine or offered someone a discount. Like if maybe they'd offered me a discount. But anyway, again, I'm rambling. Um, so yeah, I had a little think about it last night about what I'm going to do. Like I said, I don't really want to have to like up and leave again. Like I've just got here and they got to find somewhere else and then that's just going to stress me out so luckily very luckily i've managed to like message around some of my brands and move some work back to the end of the month so that's what i'm going to have to do but i have got some work that is quite urgent that i do need to edit so like i say i found a more kind of commercialized place like sainsbury's a cafe in sainsbury's gonna do some editing there today um and like i just thought i'll get out the house seeing the guy this morning he was like oh where are you off to i was like oh i found like a sainsbury's with like a more commercial cafe because i don't want to like go to these small little coffee shops that you know like there's not many seats and like disrupt residents and you know what i mean be annoying and he was a bit like oh it's a shit old way you going there and i just thought oh like it's fine like i just need somewhere to be able to work and i'd rather be in a coffee shop than in his office like i just find that weird but yeah Moved my work back till the end of the month. Mum's coming up next week, so we can have like more like a relax and just like a bit of a walking holiday, I guess. Now just get out and explore, and I'll vlog too. Um, anyway, that is like a twenty minute at least chat about this whole situation, but I feel like I needed it. There was so much that went on. Brought you up to speed. I'm gonna now go get myself a nice coffee and yeah, sit and do some work. But I'm glad that we've managed to finally catch up, and now you can understand like what's been going on. Honestly, you just couldn't write it, guys. You couldn't write it.